Corey Feldman and Lauren Hill were the couple everyone admired, the embodiment of stability and success in their neighborhood. Corey was the kind of man who took pride in the simple things. He loved his work as a carpenter, finding solace in the feel of wood beneath his hands, the satisfaction of creating something tangible and lasting. His business, though modest, was successful enough to provide them with a comfortable life. He was the steady rock in their marriage, a man of few words but deep emotions, content with the life they had built together. Every evening, he would return home from his workshop, covered in sawdust, his clothes marked with the day's labor. He would enter the house quietly, his heart warming at the thought of seeing Lauren, of sharing dinner with her after a long day. Lauren, by contrast, was the social butterfly, the life of every gathering. She thrived on attention, her laughter often the loudest in the room, her presence magnetic. She had an innate ability to charm everyone she met, effortlessly engaging in conversation and making friends wherever she went. Lauren managed their home with a meticulous touch, keeping everything in order while also indulging in hobbies that kept her busy. She was an excellent gardener, her flower beds bursting with life, and her paintings, though just a hobby, were good enough to garner compliments from visitors. She was the perfect hostess, always ready to throw a dinner party or a neighborhood barbecue, where she would play the role of the gracious, loving wife. But behind the scenes of this seemingly perfect life, Lauren was growing increasingly restless. The routine that Corey found comforting had begun to feel like a prison to her. The predictability of their days, the same faces, the same conversations, all of it started to weigh on her. Corey's contentment with their life only deepened her frustration. At first, Lauren tried to suppress her feelings, convincing herself that it was just a phase, that every marriage went through periods of boredom. But the discontent grew, gnawing at her, until she could no longer ignore it. She began seeking excitement in small, seemingly harmless ways, flirting with strangers at the grocery store, lingering a little too long in conversations with the handsome barista at the local coffee shop. These small thrills gave her a taste of the excitement she craved, but it wasn't enough. One evening, while browsing online out of sheer boredom, she stumbled upon a chat room. It was a place where people went to flirt, to escape their mundane lives, and Lauren was drawn to it like a moth to a flame. She started chatting with different men, enjoying the attention, the thrill of the forbidden. It was here that she met Timothy, a man who was everything Corey was not. He was younger, with an air of confidence that bordered on arrogance, and he made her feel alive in ways she hadn't in years. The attraction between them was immediate, and their conversations quickly escalated from innocent flirting to something much more intense. Lauren found herself sneaking out of the house to meet Timothy, their clandestine encounters becoming the highlight of her life. The thrill of the affair consumed her, filling the void that her life with Corey no longer could. She stayed out late, returning home with excuses that Corey never questioned, too trusting, too wrapped up in his own world to see what was happening right under his nose. As Lauren fell deeper into her affair with Timothy, she began to distance herself from Corey, both emotionally and physically. She no longer sought his company, no longer cared if he noticed the changes in her. The life they had built together, once a source of pride and joy, now felt like a burden she couldn't wait to escape from. Corey noticed the changes in Lauren, but he kept his suspicions to himself, clinging to the hope that it was just a phase. He had always been the type to avoid confrontation, preferring to push his feelings aside in favor of maintaining peace. But the late nights, the secret of phone calls, and the coldness in Lauren's demeanor were impossible to ignore. He wasn't a fool. He knew something was terribly wrong. The woman who once greeted him with warmth now seemed distant, her eyes never lingering on him for long, as if he were just another piece of furniture in the house. One night, as Lauren was out again, Corey found himself sitting alone in their dimly lit living room. The only sound was the ticking of the old clock on the mantel, each tick amplifying the emptiness of the room. He sat in his favorite armchair, the leather worn and familiar under his touch, but the comfort it once provided was gone. His thoughts raced back to the early days of their marriage, when they were inseparable. They had been so in love, so full of dreams and plans for the future. Corey remembered the way Lauren used to light up at the sight of him, 
how she would wrap her arms around him and pull him close as if she couldn't bear to be apart. But those days felt like a lifetime ago. Now, she barely looked at him, and when she did, her gaze seemed to pierce right through him, as if he were invisible. He thought about confronting her, demanding the truth, but the fear of what he might hear kept him silent. Instead, he resolved to wait, to gather more evidence before making any move. He would not act on suspicion alone. The idea of spying on his own wife made him feel sick, but the thought of being made a fool of, of living a lie, was even worse. But Lauren was growing bolder by the day, her recklessness fueled by the thrill of her affair. One evening, she returned home after another rendezvous with Timothy, her cheeks flushed with excitement, her eyes shining with a mixture of guilt and exhilaration. Corey was in the kitchen, chopping vegetables for dinner, his movements slow and deliberate, as if he were trying to keep himself grounded in the mundane task. Lauren watched him for a moment, her mind racing. She could see the tension in his shoulders, the way his hands gripped the knife just a little too tightly. An idea began to form in her mind, a twisted, thrilling idea that made her heart race with anticipation. She walked over to him, her steps light, her voice sweet yet tinged with something darker. Corey, there's something I need to tell you, she said, the words tasting bitter on her tongue even as she savored the power they gave her. He looked up, his eyes searching hers for any hint of what was coming. The kitchen seemed to close in around him, the air thick with unspoken words. What is it? He asked, trying to keep his voice steady, though his heart was pounding in his chest. Lauren took a deep breath, stealing herself for the bomb she was about to drop. I've been seeing someone, she said, her words slicing through the air like a knife. His name is Timothy, and he's coming over tonight. Corey froze, the knife in his hand hovering above the cutting board. For a moment, he thought he hadn't heard her correctly, that maybe it was some kind of sick joke. What the fuck are you talking about? He managed to ask, his voice barely a whisper, as if speaking too loudly might shatter the fragile reality he was clinging to. Lauren smiled, but it was a cold, cruel smile that sent chills down his spine. He'll be here soon, and when he arrives, you're going to leave us alone, she continued her tone matter-of-fact, as if she were discussing dinner plans. He wants you out of the house while we finish. You can't refuse. Get out now. Corey's heart felt like it had been ripped from his chest. He couldn't believe what he was hearing. The woman he loved, the woman he had shared a life with, was standing in front of him, telling him to leave his own home so she could be with another man. He searched her face, desperate to find some sign of the woman he had married, but all he saw was a stranger someone he no longer recognized. What are you thinking? He asked, his voice trembling with a mix of anger, disbelief, and a deep, aching sorrow that threatened to overwhelm him. Lauren's expression hardened, her eyes narrowing. I'm done with this marriage, Corey. You've become a bore, and I'm tired of pretending, she said, her words laced with venom. Timothy gives me what you can't. Now, leave us alone. Corey stared at her, his mind reeling. He wanted to scream, to shout, to demand she explain herself, but he knew it was pointless. The woman standing before him was gone, replaced by someone cold and unfeeling. Without another word, he set down the knife and walked out of the kitchen, his heart heavy with despair. As he left the room, he could feel Lauren's eyes on him, but he didn't look back. He couldn't bear to see the satisfaction in her gaze, the final nail in the coffin of their broken marriage. Lauren watched as Corey quietly left the house, the sound of the front door closing echoing through the empty hallway. She had never felt so in control, so alive. Pouring herself a glass of wine, she leaned against the kitchen counter, her heart pounding with anticipation for Timothy's arrival. Her mind was a whirlwind of thoughts, each one more thrilling than the last. She had crossed a line she could never uncross, and instead of feeling guilt, she felt a strange sense of liberation. Outside, Corey stood on the porch, his hands trembling uncontrollably. The cool night air brushed against his skin, but he barely noticed. He couldn't breathe, couldn't think. The weight of Lauren's words pressed down on him, suffocating him with their cruelty. He glanced back at the house, the warm lights inside mocking him, a stark contrast to the cold emptiness he felt. 
Unable to face the reality of what had just happened, he turned away and began walking slowly towards the backyard. His footsteps were heavy, as if he were trudging through thick mud, each step more laborious than the last. The shed stood at the far end of the yard, a small, weathered structure surrounded by the shadows of tall trees. It had always been his sanctuary, a place where he could escape from the world, from his thoughts. It was where he went to clear his mind, to find solace in the simple act of working with his hands. But tonight, the shed felt different. The familiar sight of it filled him with a sense of dread. As he approached, the door creaked open, a sound that had always been comforting but now seemed ominous, like a whisper from the past. He stepped inside, the scent of wood and sawdust, usually so calming, now felt suffocating. He looked around the small, cluttered space, his eyes scanning the workbench where tools lay scattered. His gaze then settled on a wooden box tucked away in the corner, partially hidden beneath a pile of old rags. It was old, covered in a thick layer of dust, a relic from a time when things were simpler, when life was filled with hope instead of despair. He hadn't opened it in years, not since his father passed it down to him, along with the shed itself. Corey hesitated, his heart pounding in his chest. The box held memories, pieces of his past that he had long buried. But something drew him to it now, an inexplicable urge that he couldn't resist. Slowly, he walked over to it, his hands shaking as he lifted the lid. Inside, the tools were neatly arranged, each one carefully polished and sharpened. Hammers, chisels, saws, familiar implements of his trade, objects that had once brought him comfort. But there was one item that caught his eye, something that had remained untouched for years. It was a hunting knife, its blade gleaming in the dim light of the shed. The knife was old, the handle worn smooth from years of use. His father had given it to him when he was a young boy, a rite of passage that had meant so much at the time. But now, as he held it in his hand, the cold steel pressing against his palm, the knife took on a new meaning. As Corey gripped the handle, he felt a dark, primal urge rising within him, something he had never felt before. His mind was a chaotic storm of emotions, rage, betrayal, despair, but all of them coalesced into one single thought, revenge. The world around him seemed to fade away, the sounds of the night muffled by the roar of blood in his ears. He had been pushed to the brink, and now, standing in the shed that had once been his refuge, he knew there was no turning back. He looked down at the knife, its blade sharp and unforgiving. It was a tool, but in this moment, it felt like a weapon, a means to an end. The calm, rational part of his mind tried to fight back, tried to remind him of who he was, of the man he had always strived to be. But that voice was drowned out by the overwhelming tide of anger and pain. Corey knew what he had to do. The line between right and wrong blurred, and all that remained was the cold hard reality of the situation. With the knife clutched tightly in his hand, Corey turned and walked out of the shed, the creak of the door the only sound that marked his departure. The night was silent, the stars hidden behind a thick layer of clouds. As he made his way back to the house, his footsteps no longer felt heavy. There was a sense of purpose in his stride, a clarity that had been missing for so long. Corey was no longer the man he had been just hours ago. That man had been broken, discarded by the woman he loved. The man walking back towards the house, however, was different. He was a man with nothing left to lose, and that made him more dangerous than he had ever been before. Lauren was sprawled comfortably on the living room sofa, her legs draped over the armrest as she sipped her wine, a smug satisfaction playing across her lips. The evening had unfolded exactly as she planned. The thrill of power surged through her, making her feel more alive than she had in years. When the doorbell finally rang, she didn't even flinch. She set down her glass, anticipation tingling in her veins as she moved to greet Timothy. He entered the house with an air of arrogance, his stride confident, as though he had already claimed ownership of everything within its walls. Lauren greeted him with a sultry smile, her heart racing not from love or affection, but from the sheer audacity of what they were about to do. She took his hand and led him through the hallway, her mind focused solely on the night of passion she expected to unfold. 
They were barely inside the bedroom when they heard the front door creak open. Timothy paused, his hand still on Lauren's waist, a smirk curling his lips. He's back already? His tone was mocking, tinged with an arrogance that both excited and irritated Lauren. Lauren laughed lightly, trying to brush off the sudden unease that prickled at the back of her mind. Don't worry about him, she replied, though her voice held an edge she hadn't intended. That looser won't do anything. He knows better. But as the sound of Corey's footsteps echoed through the house, closer and closer, Lauren's confidence began to falter. There was something off about the way Corey had left earlier, so quietly, so resigned. It had seemed too easy, too unlike him. She pushed the thought away, turning her attention back to Timothy, but the unease lingered, gnawing at her composure. Then, Corey appeared in the doorway, and Lauren's world stopped. He stood there, his face a blank canvas, devoid of any emotion, yet there was something in his eyes that made her blood run cold. He was holding a hunting knife, the blade gleaming ominously in the dim bedroom light. Corey, what are you doing? Lauren's voice came out shaky, betraying the fear that was quickly overtaking her bravado. Timothy, sensing the tension but misreading its depth, stepped forward, trying to assert his dominance in the situation. Hey, man, you need to calm down, he said, his voice dripping with condescension. Just leave us alone like she said. But Corey didn't move. He just stood there, staring at them with eyes that seemed to have been drained of all humanity. It was as if he was looking through them, into some abyss only he could see. Lauren's fear intensified. This wasn't the Corey she knew. The quiet, submissive husband who had always been so easy to manipulate was gone, replaced by a man she no longer recognized. The realization hit her like a physical blow. This was a side of Corey she had never imagined existed, and it terrified her. Corey, please, put the knife down, she pleaded, her voice trembling as her heart pounded in her chest. But Corey didn't listen. Instead, he took a slow, deliberate step forward, the blade in his hand catching the light in a way that made Lauren's stomach churn. Timothy, still underestimating the seriousness of the situation, tried to push past Corey, but in a flash, Corey was upon him. The knife slashed through the air with terrifying precision, and Timothy's smirk was replaced by a look of pure, unadulterated fear. His scream pierced the air, a guttural, primal sound that reverberated through the house, sending chills down Lauren's spine. She watched in frozen horror as Corey attacked with a ferocity she had never thought possible. Blood splattered across the walls, the floor, everywhere, as Corey's rage, long suppressed, erupted in a violent storm. Lauren wanted to move, to run, to do anything, but her body betrayed her. Her legs felt like they were made of lead, refusing to obey her desperate commands. She was paralyzed, trapped in the nightmare she had unwittingly created. All she could do was watch as Corey exacted his brutal revenge, each of his movements methodical and merciless, like a man possessed. When it was over, Timothy lay on the floor, barely conscious, his body a bloody, broken mess. The room was eerily silent, save for the ragged breaths of the man who had just been reduced to a shadow of his former self. Corey turned to Lauren, his eyes cold, devoid of any warmth or recognition. He was no longer the man she had married. He was something else entirely, something terrifying. Now, it's your turn, Corey said his voice eerily calm, each word dripping with a deadly finality. Lauren stumbled back, her heart racing as terror gripped her like a vice. Corey, please, don't do this. I love you so much, she begged, tears streaming down her face. But there was no mercy in his eyes, no hesitation in his steps. He advanced toward her, the knife still clutched in his hand. And in that moment, Lauren knew her life would never be the same. She had played a dangerous game, and now the price was being exacted in blood. The night unfolded into a nightmare that neither Lauren nor Timothy could have ever anticipated. As the hours dragged on, the violence became a brutal symphony of pain, each strike from Corey more merciless than the last. The man they had both underestimated, dismissed as weak and passive, had revealed a darkness neither had known existed. When it was over, 
they were left in a state that was beyond broken, their bodies a map of bruises and cuts, their minds teetering on the edge of shock, his chest heaving from the exertion of what he had done. His clothes were drenched with blood, a macabre reminder of the night's events. His hands, still trembling, bore the marks of his unbridled fury, knuckles raw from the blows he had delivered. He looked down at Lauren, who lay crumpled and motionless on the floor, her once beautiful face swollen beyond recognition, streaked with a gruesome mixture of tears and blood. Timothy, lying nearby, was barely clinging to consciousness, his groans of pain the only sound breaking the heavy silence. Corey felt oddly detached, as though he were an observer rather than a participant in the scene before him. The rage that had fueled his actions had drained away, leaving behind a hollow emptiness. He surveyed the room, taking in the destruction he had wrought, the overturned furniture, the blood-spattered walls, the broken bodies of the two people who had shattered his world. For a brief moment, a flicker of doubt crossed his mind. Had he gone too far? Was there a line he had crossed that he could never return from? But as quickly as the doubt came, it was swept away by the memory of Lauren's cold, cutting words. The way she had looked at him, dismissing him as if he were nothing more than an inconvenience, a burden she had long grown tired of carrying. The way she had ordered him out of his own home to make way for her lover. The betrayal still stung, a deep, festering wound that refused to heal. In the face of such betrayal, how could he have reacted any differently? Corey's eyes hardened as he pushed away any lingering doubts. What he had done, he had done out of a sense of justice, of reclaiming the power that had been stripped from him. He had loved Lauren with every fiber of his being, had devoted his life to making her happy, only to be repaid with deceit and humiliation. She had destroyed him long before he had laid a hand on her. With a final look at the scene of devastation, Corey turned and walked out of the house, his footsteps slow and deliberate. He didn't know where he was going or what he would do next. The life he had known was over, reduced to rubble by the events of the night. The only certainty he had left was that he couldn't stay there any longer. The air outside was crisp, the morning sun just beginning to rise above the horizon, casting long shadows across the yard. Corey didn't look back as he walked down the driveway, his mind a blur of thoughts that refused to coalesce into anything coherent. The world around him felt surreal, like a waking dream from which he could not escape. As he reached the end of the driveway, the first hints of sirens wailed in the distance, growing louder with each passing second. But Corey didn't quicken his pace. He kept walking, putting one foot in front of the other, leaving behind the house, the memories, and the life that had led him to this moment. He was a man untethered, drifting into an uncertain future with nothing left to lose. When Lauren woke up, she was greeted by a harsh, sterile world. The fluorescent lights overhead stung her eyes, making her squint as she tried to adjust. The first thing she noticed was the pain, a deep, throbbing ache that seemed to permeate every part of her body. Her head felt heavy, her mind clouded with confusion and the remnants of what she hoped were just nightmares. As her vision cleared, she realized she was in a hospital room. The walls were a drab, clinical white, the air filled with the soft beeping of machines and the faint hum of voices in the hallway. She tried to move, but a sharp pain shot through her side, forcing her to stay still. It was only then that she became aware of the bandages wrapped around her arms and torso the four drips snaking from her hand, and the steady, rhythmic pulse of the heart monitor beside her bed. Panic set in as fragmented memories of the previous night began to coalesce into something horrifyingly real. Corey's cold, unrecognizable face loomed in her mind, the glint of the hunting knife in his hand as vivid as if it were still before her. She could hear Timothy's screams, a sound so primal and terrified that it made her blood run cold. The memory was too vivid to be a dream, too raw to be anything but the truth. A nurse entered the room just then, her expression a practiced mask of concern. She moved with a quiet efficiency, checking the monitors before noticing that Lauren was awake. You're awake, the nurse said softly, her voice professional yet gentle. How are you feeling? Lauren tried to speak, but her throat felt like sandpaper, raw and dry. The nurse, Noticing her struggle, 
quickly filled a plastic cup with water and held it to Lauren's lips, helping her take a few sips. The water was cool, soothing her parched throat, but it did nothing to ease the terror clawing at her insides. Where, where am I? Lauren croaked, her voice barely more than a whisper. You're at the county hospital, the nurse replied calmly. You were brought in last night with multiple injuries. You've been through a lot, but you're in stable condition now. You're going to be okay. Lauren's eyes darted around the room, searching for something familiar, something that might anchor her in this new reality. But the room was empty save for the medical equipment and the nurse by her side. There was no sign of Timothy. A wave of dread washed over her as she forced herself to ask the question she was most afraid of. Timothy, what about Timothy? The nurse's face darkened, her expression tinged with something that looked like pity. He's in the ICU, she said quietly. He's stable, but his injuries are severe. The doctors are doing everything they can. The words hit Lauren like a punch to the gut. Timothy, her lover, the man she had risked everything for, was fighting for his life, and she was lying here, helpless, her own body a wreck. She wanted to cry, to scream, to feel something, guilt, remorse, anger, but instead, she felt an overwhelming numbness, a void where her emotions should have been. She lay there in silence, the nurse's words echoing in her mind. Stable but severe. Timothy was still alive. But for how long? And what would happen if he didn't make it? Would Corey be satisfied with what he had done? Or was there more to his revenge? Is, is Corey here? Lauren asked, a tremor of fear and a flicker of hope mingling in her voice. Despite everything, some irrational part of her clung to the idea that Corey might have come to see her that some part of the man she had known still cared. The nurse shook her head, her expression neutral but firm. No one's come to see you yet, but the police were here earlier. They'll need to speak with you once you're feeling better. The mention of the police sent a jolt of fear through Lauren. Of course, the police would be involved. There was no hiding from what had happened, no way to escape the consequences of her actions. The reality of her situation was beginning to sink in, the gravity of what she had done and the terrible price she would now have to pay. Lauren closed her eyes, overwhelmed by the weight of it all. She had brought this upon herself, and now there was no turning back. The nightmare was far from over, and she knew that the hardest part was still to come. The days that followed were a blur of police interviews, medical treatments, and endless hours of lying in a hospital bed, staring at the ceiling. Lauren felt as though she were trapped in a nightmare she couldn't escape, the weight of her actions pressing down on her with an almost physical force. The hospital room, once a place of recovery, had become her prison, its white walls a constant reminder of the hell she had wrought. Each day, the police came with their relentless questions, their faces a mix of curiosity and professional detachment. Their questions were probing and unforgiving each interrogation stripping away a layer of her carefully maintained composure. Each time she recounted the events of that fateful night, it was like reliving the horror anew, Corey's cold, emotionless gaze, the flash of the hunting knife, Timothy's screams echoing in her mind. It felt as though the walls of the room were closing in, suffocating her with the enormity of her own guilt. The police informed her of Corey's fate. He had turned himself in shortly after leaving the house walking into the local police station covered in blood, his demeanor eerily calm. He confessed to everything, his assault on Timothy, his attack on Lauren, and the destruction he had left in his wake. There was no trial, no lengthy legal battle. Corey had pleaded guilty to all charges, and his lack of remorse shocked everyone. The courtroom was devoid of dramatic showdowns or emotional outbursts. Corey's admission was simple and chilling his blank stare reflecting the cold indifference he felt towards his actions. Lauren was overwhelmed by a tumultuous mix of emotions. Anger simmered beneath her surface, directed at Corey for the brutality he had inflicted. But intertwined with that anger was a deep-seated guilt for her role in setting off the chain of events that led to the violence. She had been the catalyst, her betrayal driving Corey to the brink. The realization was unbearable. Her actions had not only destroyed her marriage but also left deep scars on everyone involved. Timothy's condition was precarious for weeks. 
His injuries, though eventually stabilized, had left him in a state of profound vulnerability. When Lauren visited him in the hospital, the once vibrant spark in his eyes was replaced by a vacant, haunted look. The man who had once been her lover could barely look at her. Their relationship, once fueled by excitement and infidelity, was now a painful reminder of their shared transgressions. There was no solace to be found in their encounters, only a stark realization of the damage done. Lauren's own physical injuries healed slowly, but the emotional scars were far deeper and more enduring. The support she once took for granted had vanished. Friends and neighbors who had envied her perfect life now avoided her. Their pitying glances and whispered judgments a constant reminder of her fall from grace. The community that had once celebrated her now saw her as a pariah, a cautionary tale of a life gone terribly wrong. The reality of her situation settled in as she lay in her hospital bed, alone and broken. Her marriage was in ruins, her reputation obliterated. She had nothing left but the painful memories and the relentless question of how she would ever begin to rebuild her life. The path to redemption, if such a path existed, seemed impossibly distant. All that remained was a profound sense of isolation and the haunting knowledge of the lives she had irrevocably altered.